What I'm about to share with you will probably surprise you. Grüezi mit Rand, Gregory von Lebestag hier. Recent research on the kettlebell swing goes against popular belief. The research that I'm referring to is the so-called Bell Trial that has been conducted by RKC certified physiotherapist Neil May from Australia. I've had a great conversation with him on our Kettle Nights podcast. You'll find a link in the description. The current beliefs and claims are challenged distinctively in four areas. Number one, technique doesn't seem to be as important. Number two, the net force acting on the kettlebell in the swing is the result of a mostly vertical ground reaction. Number three, heavy weights might not be necessary for most people. And number four, sheer forces in the kettlebell swing seem to be irrelevant. Now let's unpack this and we'll start with number one. Of course, technique is always important when it comes to kettlebell training, especially when we move up to heavier weights and more advanced exercises. Even research detects large differences in ground reaction force between athletes or experts and novices. However, it might be that we are exaggerating the importance of proper technique in certain situations. Neil's Bell trial focused on the older part of the population ranging from 60 to 80 years old. These sages and harbors of wisdom were called inactive. This means these people haven't been training before. Even though he instructed them with the kettlebell swing, the pandemic of 2020 came in the way. This led to the fact that participants had to continue on their own. So participants performed up to 3,000 swings in 16 weeks. To Neil's amazement, after they finished the trial in the lab, technique didn't really change much. And this technique would still be considered bad on the current notions of what proper technique in the kettlebell swing is supposed to look like. Yet participants didn't report any problems or injuries. In fact, they were able to harvest all the benefits that proper kettlebell training, if you do it on a regular basis, can provide you with. And it adds to the fact that while proper technique is still important, it's probably not as important as we think it is in a contextualized situation. Number two, forces acting on the kettlebell swing. A hard style swing is defined by its dominant movement, hip extension. Current instruction is to drive the hips forward as aggressively and as fast as possible. This is translated into popular belief that the dominant ground reaction is forward force. This translated into the common belief that the dominant ground reaction is also in the forward horizontal direction. Now the data from the trial does not support this. Contrary to popular belief, forward force ranged only from 9 to 21 percent. The data suggests that the force that is acting on the kettlebell is mostly a vertical ground reaction and it ranges up to 95 percent. What this means in simple terms is that when you swing the kettlebell forward most of the ground reaction force is not horizontal but vertical. Coaches should therefore encourage a movement pattern that is similar to a vertical jump rather than attempting to thrust the kettlebell forward with all of your power. Number three, heavy weights might not be necessary, at least not for most people. Neil's paper showed that swings with a 56 kilogram kettlebell increased peak net force by less than 30 percent compared to an 8 kg. Yet physical demands go through the roof when you start swinging with a 48 kg compared to an 8 kg. What this means is while there is an increase in peak force, it stands in no comparison to the increase of the rate of perceived effort. Essentially, you're working like an ox for a mere 30% increase in net force compared to working like a butterfly. 99% of people do not have to swing heavy weights because the effort to benefit ratio doesn't seem to match. With athletes, this might be a complete different story. The final point, sheer forces seem to be irrelevant. This revelation came after I've had a conversation with Neil about Stu McGill's paper on the kettlebell swing. Stu mentioned in a podcast with Squat University that the key man that Pavel is using, the bracing of the abdominals, engineers out sheer forces that occur in the kettlebell swing. Let's take a master of kettlebell lifting, Pavel Sotsalin. He doesn't extend his spine the way most do. He actually flexes his spine into a kettlebell kime, a absolute locked core with slight uh, flexion, a very powerful home base. That was a strategy to stiffen the spine and engineer out shear. 
So when you kettlebell swing, it starts out as a compression to shear ratio as you would pull in a deadlift. But as you pull the kettle through, to, uh, through, through the top of the arc, you suddenly get more shear load and less compression. Now Neil's analysis of Stu's paper goes like this. In this paper, we had seven healthy young males who were performing a swing. And there was a small and likely clinically insignificant shear force. And this was in the backswing part of the swing, which renders the keyme, which happens on top when the kettlebells afloat, almost useless if your goal is to combat the clinically insignificant shear force. Unless someone has a bony instability in the vertebrae, there's likely to be a 99% probability that the shear force during the swing is not important. So therefore, any kind of action that we take to engineer them out is not important as well. Assuming you're not doing anything stupid. So while braced abdominals do make sense in certain situations, overemphasizing it is probably not necessary. So what are your thoughts about these four revelations? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it and consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. If you're looking for kettlebell courses that can help you lose weight, build muscle and improve your kettlebell technique, then check out the labor stock academy let us help you discover a new perspective on kettlebell training making it simple and easy for you to understand join the waiting list of your desired course now and secure your spot when it's open for enrollment link is in the description